Once upon a time, in the town of Footbridge, There lived a young girl named Kate Palmer. Life wasn't easy for Kate. When she was 11, her brother fell off the roof of their two-story apartment house. He landed on her parents. Because Kate had no close relatives, she was going to be sent to an orphanage. But right before she was to leave, there was a knock on the door. Yes? I'm your Auntie Moffat. Oh? I've come to live with you, to keep you out of the orphanage. <clears throat> Ain't you gonna invite me in? Would you like to come in? Yes, thank you. Don't mind if I do. Lordy, I have been traveling all day. Where from? A good distance. You, I'm hungry. You got a chicken neck? No. Maybe I do in my bag. You, you found one? No, it's licorice. Want a piece? No, thank you. Best come get acquainted. Seems I'll be living with you for the rest of my life. <laughs> I, I never heard of an Auntie Moppet. Whose fault's that? I don't know. Are you bright? Well, are you? I, uh, I make it great. Are you popular? At school, are you popular at school? I have a couple friends. Are you lazy? <laughs> Lordy girl, do I have to ask you everything twice? My mom always said, my mom. There, there. What's your name again? Kate. Kate, how old are you? Eleven. What grade does that put you in? Sixth. Kate. I know it's hard right now, but I'm gonna let you in on a secret. Okay. When? <laughs> now, it's this. Everyone has their share of misery. Most folks, it's spread over a lifetime. Never knowing when it will strike next. But for you, the worst is over. You just have to make it through this. You think you can do that? I guess I'll have to. Good girl. Maybe you are right. Do I have any other relatives? Don't know. Never met any. Where did you say you were from? I didn't say. Doesn't matter though, does it? Cause I'm from here now, right? I guess. You said I got my, uh... Misery? Yeah, my misery over with. Does that mean I won't ever be sad again? Of course not, girl. You'll be sad plenty of times, like everybody. 
But for you, the worst is over. And that's a rare thing. How do you know that? I know lots of things. Like what? I know what lizards dream about. And I know what ghosts smell like. And sometimes I know people's thoughts. Really? Yes, sometimes. Do, do you know my thoughts? Not yet, young'un. Not yet. I'll sleep here. There are two extra bedrooms. This'll do. It won't be very comfortable. That's all right. I can keep track of visitors. We don't get many. Oh, you might be surprised. Is this all going too fast for you? A little. Don't worry, child. You'll get used to me, and I'll get used to you, and before we know it, we'll be best friends. You believe that? I don't know. Me either. <laughs> but we have to try. And to give it a try, they did. Kate, of course, suspected that her aunt was eccentric. It didn't take long for her to be sure of. Ready for breakfast? Yes, Auntie. What is it this time? Special recipe. They're all special recipes. Which one's this? Scruffle. Looks like scrambled eggs. It is scrambled eggs. <laughs> then what makes it scruffle? This! <coughs> Clears your sinuses. Oh? And keeps away evil spirits. Evil spirits? Yes. That's just a superstition, Auntie. Don't be so sure. There aren't any evil spirits. Then it's working! Over the next few months, Kate kept eating her squabble, and the evil spirits apparently stayed away. But odd things continued to occur. Stop. What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing? No. What did she call you? What? That girl at school. Monica. What did she call you? You have to say it. How did you know? Tell me. An, an ugly bitch everyone hates. Ugly, huh? Yeah. What does she look like? Blonde hair, green eyes, about as tall as I am. You got one of them school picture books? A yearbook? <laughs> yes, a yearbook. Yeah? Show me. Too bad. What's too bad? She really is a pretty little girl. <laughs> you got homework? Yeah. Best tend to it. Okay, Auntie. And listen, child. Don't make no difference what other people say or think. You can't do nothing about that. You got to tend to yourself. Do you understand? Yes, Auntie. And sooner or later, everything comes back around. 
everything. Afternoon, child. What happened in school today? What do you think happened? Could be all sorts of things. You'll have to tell me. That girl, Monica. The one they called you ugly? Yes. What about her? You sure you don't know? How could I? She got a wart on her nose. <laughs> you didn't say nothing about that. No, I mean between yesterday and today. I guess with hormones and all, it can happen. A really big wart, black, right on the tip of her nose. Well, that don't sound too pretty. Oh, it's not. <laughs> Guess she won't be talking ugly for a few weeks, will she? Is that how long it'll be there? How would I know? One day, Kate got home from school earlier than usual. I'm home. Auntie? Can I help you? I need Auntie Moffat. She's not here. Well, it's an emergency. You can wait here for I, I need foxglove, girl. I need purple foxglove right away. Uh, I, I don't know. She keeps him in the drawers. Tell her I'll pay her tomorrow. You're home early. Teachers' meetings. A woman stopped by for some purple fox glove, said it was an emergency. Oh, Lord, I best get her some. Who was it? I don't know, but she knew where it was and she took a bottle. Okay. Said she'd pay you tomorrow? That's all right. There sure are a lot of bottles in here. People got lots of different ailments. And that stuff cures them? It can, child. It can. Maybe people just get better because they expect to get better. Like one of them placebos you study about? Uh, yeah. Foxglove, Willowbach, Henbeck, Mandrake, placebo. What difference does it make what you call it, if it works? One thing Kate discovered was that her aunt was quite a storyteller. She told Kate about the jilting bomb, which, on the night of the summer solstice, searches for a human to consume. She told Kate about dream one, and the river of forgiveness, and the migrating flock of regrets. Kate had heard them all many times. Then one night, there was a new story. I once lived in a village. What village, Auntie? Name not important, just a village. One summer, Crops started dying, and animals were disappearing, and people were getting sick. 
And a couple times, it rained toad frogs. <laughs> what caused it? At first, we didn't know. But we began to realize <clears throat> the town was haunted. Haunted? The town? Yes. We even knew who was causing it. Who? Captain Bellwig. He had died a few months back in a farming accident. I don't believe in ghosts. Don't mean there aren't none. I guess not. What did the town do? The only thing we could do. We contacted a sin eater. A sin eater? Yes. When people die suddenly, they probably got sins on their soul. Their spirits can't go to heaven, so they roam the earth. So we contacted Moyford Murdoch. He was a sin eater? Yes. He had to eat a piece of bread and drink some ale over Bellwig's dead body. Why? To consume his sins, girl. What you think? This sounds like a folktale, Auntie. I was there, and Bellwig's ghost was never seen again by anybody. Maybe people just wanted to believe. And the sin eater Murdoch got so sick, he died. Oh. In the end, he was hobbled and stooped, barely able to move. Well, I guess when people get old. He was 33. 33? <laughs> yes. Each sin he ate stayed with him, consumed him, became part of him. In the end, he was twisted, depraved creature, barely human no more. Couldn't a priest forgive him for all those sins? Lordy, no. Why not? Because them sins weren't really Murdoch's. They belonged to other folk. Priests can't forgive someone's sins they didn't actually commit. Besides, priests can't do nothing about ghosts. The year flew by. Kate graduated from high school as a valedictorian. She continued to live at home and enrolled in the nearby Footbridge University, taking pre-nursing courses. She had gone steady with a classmate during her senior year, but when he went off to university, he broke up with her. She expected to feel awful, but evidently her aunt had been right and she'd gotten her heartache over early in life. Have you thought about a fellow? Auntie, I just broke up with my boyfriend. Can't you give me a month or two? I'm not talking about a boyfriend. Oh, you mean a permanent fellow? Don't get cute. You've got to be ready. Ready? When the right one comes along. I've got plenty of time, Auntie. Don't get cocky with fate. One day, Kate was coming home late from her class. Sorry I'm a little late, Auntie. I was at the library. What's his name? His name? 
You weren't studying by yourself. Uh, Derek. I want to meet him. Auntie, he's just a guy in one of my classes. Sometime next week would be good. <laughs> this is really kind of silly. Does he have a job? Auntie! Does he? He owns a little neighborhood restaurant. Derek Steiner. Can I meet him? I guess, but we barely know each other. Most married people barely know each other. <laughs> married? Who said anything about married? How about his diner? <laughs> his diner? What about his diner? We could visit him there. Auntie, this is going to be very <laughs> awkward. Only if you let it. He could cook something for us. Please, Auntie. Food never lies. What's that supposed to mean? Food never lies. <laughs> What are you studying? Business law. Food science. Yeah. Do you like it? What? Business law. Oh, uh, pretty dry stuff. <laughs> I would imagine. Food science is interesting. Then you're one up on me. <laughs> Especially nutrition. I guess owning a restaurant, you have to know a lot about nutrition. What's going on, Kate? What do you mean? Is something wrong? No. Well, actually, I'm having trouble with the segue. I was trying to get from food science, to nutrition, to your diner, to, uh, an invitation. Sounds exhausting. It is. <laughs> so, why don't we skip the segue? Good idea. You remember I told you I was raised by my aunts? Yeah. Well, she's found out we've studied together a few times. Okay. And she wants to meet you. What? To, uh... Approve me as a study buddy? Well, she seems to think that since we've studied five or six times at the library, that the next step is matrimony. <laughs> Am I blushing yet? <laughs> well, there is a slight hint of fuchsia moving in from your earlobes. <laughs> oh, God, you're right. I can feel it. Quite flattering, actually. Oh. Yeah. So, um... She wants to check me out. I'm afraid so. <clears throat> When's this meeting supposed to take place? I don't know. Next week? Okay. Where? Unfortunately, your diner. You know what? I'll just tell her you said no. That'll put an end to this whole embarrassing ordeal and... Yes! What? I say yes. Let's do it. Seriously? Well, a chance for two new customers? How can I pass that up? I have no idea what the three of us will even talk about. How about nutrition? Nancy, I'm not. <sighs> Ladies. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. right. 
I hope it's okay. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, Kate said you were particular about your food. Oh, she did, did she? So I made you something special with magical powers. What is it? Elixir of Mudbug. <laughs> uh, actually, it's crayfish and hominy grits. What kind of powers does it have? It makes you feel good about being alive. You hear that? <laughs> Please, Auntie. The three of them talked late into the night. Aunt Moffat kept the conversation going, asking about Kate's and Derek's plans for the future. She even told Derek a few stories, including the one about the city and how people who had died unexpectedly had to have one to be saved. The one thing they didn't talk about was nutrition. It turned out that Aunt Muffet was on to something about Kate and Jerry. The two continued to study together more and more often, and occasionally at his dining. My uh, aunt wants me to invite you over to our place. Okay. For this weekend? W what, for dinner? I don't know. She's being very mysterious about it. Look, if this is uncomfortable, what am I saying? Of course this is uncomfortable. Or if you have other plans, just say when? so. When? Saturday? I guess. I'll be there. Have a clue. <sighs> Hello, Mr. Mays. You both can have a seat. Right here. You have to stare into each other's eyes until the buzzer goes off. What? And not speak a word. What's the point? You'll say. How long? Four minutes. Oh, that doesn't sound so bad. minutes anyway oh. <laughs> <laughs> you were like naughty little 
<laughs> Sorry, Andy. <laughs> I think you two might have a chance. From that moment, Kate and Derek were inseparable. They discovered they had much in common. They both enjoyed foreign movies, volunteering at the local animal shelter, and bird watching. Oh my God! What? I can't believe it! What? I've never seen one around here, ever. What? What is it? There, in that tree. Can't you see it? Who could have imagined? Kate, it's a rare, lavender-lipped pea wren. What? A lavender-lipped pea wren. <laughs> it's an endangered species. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to become an endangered species. <laughs> Kate had become fiercely devoted to her aunt. And even though Jerry was raised a Catholic and didn't go along with all of Aunt Moffat's strange beliefs, he treated her like his own family. In fact, every Sunday after Mass, Jerry made them elixir of mud water. Derek and Kate continued at attending Footbridge University, and by their junior year, as you may have guessed, they had fallen in love. What's this? Open it! An invitation? To dinner! Not the diner? Nope. A fancy restaurant. Uh, Derek's mother's getting one too. <gasps> Auntie, what's wrong? Oh, Lordy, I'm so happy, child. Just so happy. You didn't know? I wasn't for sure. I thought you figured it out already, like you do everything. No one knows the mysteries of the heart, or ever will. Then you'll come? <laughs> Try to stop me. Where's your mother? Is she sick? It's me, ain't it? What? What does she mean? Please don't hold it against her. It was the priest. He said the church condemned witchcraft. Witchcraft? I'm only telling you what the man said. Seriously? Witchcraft? That's ridiculous. I can't believe. People talk. They've seen different people coming and going. I don't care, Auntie. It's not right. I'm sorry. I tried to talk to her. Didn't do much good. If you'll just give me a little time. To what? Introduce her to the 21st century? Mom's not bad, Kate. She's just setting her ways. Setting her ways? Is that how you excuse her? Stop. We did not come here to talk about mothers or priests or witches. Did we? Did we? No. no. I believe you had something to announce, right? Is that right? Yes. yes. <laughs> then let's hear it and no more foolish talk, or I'll give you both an evil eye and you'll have bad luck for the next three years. <laughs> 
That was sorta a joke. Oh. Sorta? Okay, it was a real joke. <laughs> sorta. Of course, Kate and Jerry made their engagement official that evening. And even though Jerry's mom had cast a call on the occasion, they didn't let it interfere with their commitment to each other. And Muff insisted on that. In fact, they planned to get married as soon as they graduated from the university. But life doesn't always go as planned. Right before graduation, Kate's Aunt Muppet unexpectedly passed away. It was an incredibly sad time for Kate, but just as Aunt Muppet had promised, Kate never became inconsolable, and through it all, Derek was there for her. No one seemed to know how old Aunt Muppet was when she died or where she was from, or even if she had any family. In the end, I guess it didn't really matter. Three days later, Aunt Muppet was buried under a stately 75-year-old yew tree in the Sunnydale Cemetery. When Kate returned home from the burial service, a woman was waiting for her. <gasps> who, who are you? Mrs. Galpin? What are you doing here? I'm waiting for you. How'd you get in? You take care of her? My aunt? Of course, your aunt. Well, yes, but we buried her at Sunnydale. I'm not talking about the burying. I mean before the burying. What? That's what I was afraid of. What's that? Bread. Bread? What for? The sin eater, of course. The sin eater? Yes, he has to eat the bread that was on her coffin. So you've got to arrange it. Me? <laughs> Who else? I can't. I'm not family. Didn't your aunt tell you about it? Just stories. Just stories. Is that what you think? It was just one of Auntie's folk tales. <sighs> it doesn't matter if you believe it or not. Your aunt died sudden like. If she's got sins, they're still there with her. So you've got to arrange a sin eater so she can rid of them, so she can rust. You have to. But I don't know where. They're around. Find one. What's this? It's for you. Whatever you do, don't let her down. If you get this letter, child, it means I passed on. If it was sudden, I need a sin eater. There's a man named Holly Satchel in Widow Hot who might can help. Don't know more than that. Remember that first day when I said we'd likely get used to each other and be best friends? That's just what happened, ain't it? I hardly ever said, but I was as proud and pleased as if you were my own. I guess in a way you were. And remember, you and your fella will be traveling together for the rest of your lives. Make sure it's a happy journey.
seriously. Yeah. A sin eater? Yeah. Wasn't that just one of her stories? That's what I thought. But, but what if it's true? Come on, Kate. A sin eater? She was right about so many other things. Kate, I loved your aunt. You know that she could be sweet and charming and unpredictable and mysterious. I know. And plenty weird. Mm, eccentric. Okay, eccentric. Derek, she raised me. She was like my mother. I know. It was her last wish. It must have been very important to her. I know. What are you going to do? I don't know. Maybe try to find Harley Satchel? What do you think? Well, if that's what it'll take to make you feel like you've done right by her, then... Am I being silly? Uh, what I think doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Of course it does. It's been a tough week, Kate. Why don't we talk about it tomorrow? You're probably right. Do you want me to stay with you? I think I'd like to be by myself tonight, but thanks. next morning, Kate arrived at the diner. You're sure it was her? As opposed to what? A hallucination? Psychotic delusion? Maybe a demonic phantasm? Kate, I'm only asking. Sorry. All I know is what I saw and heard. Okay. I realize how it sounds. We should stop wasting any more time. What? Talking about ghosts? Yeah. How soon can you leave? Leave? For what? Well, height. Harley Satchel? Was that his name? It's hard not to love you. Oh, good. <laughs> See that it stays that way. Sin Eda? Yeah. That's some guy that eats sin? Yeah. <sighs> Jesus, who comes up with this shit? I gotta go. I got cabinets need refinishing and I'm already running behind. Please, if there's anything you can tell Lady, me. I ain't never heard of no sin eater. Mr. Satchel. Mr. Satchel, please help us. Someone very dear to us died unexpectedly. Her Aunt Moffat. And she said to contact you that you might have some information. Isn't it up to us to help our loved ones any way we can? Isn't it? Even when they're no longer with us? Think of your own mother. If she were trapped in the spirit world. What you are talking about is a sin. I know. Big time sin, condemned by the church. Yes. 
Will you help us? Now put that away. I don't even want to see it. Please, Mr. Satchel, won't you help us? It was a fellow by the name of uh, uh, Marvin Morlock or something. Supposedly had special powers. What kind of special powers? Now that's all I'm going to say. Where can we find him? Graveyard. He died last year. What happened? Paper said the cause of death was unknown. Was he fairly young when he died, but shriveled up, feeble, and sickly? I, uh... I understand. Is there anyone else like him with his special powers? If they ill, nobody's talking. Now, best of luck to you, and I gotta go. Thank you, Mr. Satchel. For what? I didn't say nothing. Kate and Jerry spent the rest of the day asking some of the folks in rural Wellheit about Cindy. They didn't have much luck till late in the day. Really? What I heard, name's Cletus McCord. Lives in that house down the road there. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bayberry. We need to speak to him right away. He ain't home now. Won't be back till tomorrow. We'll go back first thing in the morning. What? Nothing. What? I'm worried. Yeah, I know. Do you think she'll be back tonight? Maybe. Maybe you should stay with me. You shouldn't be alone. But if she does come back, I don't want it to be to an empty house. Well, in that case, how about if I stay at your place? Then you believe me? About her appearing? I believe you think you saw her. How's that? Is that as good as I'll get? So far. But, but I'm trying. What do you say? Can I stay with you? Okay. Yes, I do. You've worn me down. Now, did she speak again? Yes. I think she's afraid of getting stuck here, in this world, as a spirit. That could happen? I don't know, but it sounded like it. Mr. McCord? Cletus McCord? Yeah? We were told you knew about sin eating. Sin eating? Absolving someone of their sins? Who told you that? We're not saying there's anything wrong. Was that old man Bayberry just up the road? Well, yes. He said you might be able to help us. Damn that man! Ever since I run over his dog. <laughs> I told him it was an accident. Ever since then, he never misses a chance to give me a heap of crap. We just need a sin eater for a couple hours. What? We were hoping... Hell no! You don't have to worry. We're not here to cause you any trouble. Sin eater? That's what you call it? Yeah. Lady, I don't even know what one of them damn things even is. Good! Oh, God. 
Uh, Derek, what do we do now? Go back, I guess. I'll try making some phone calls. Phone calls? You mean like, hello, could I speak to the Sin Eater? Yes, I'll hold. Historical societies, museums, writers' groups, they may have heard something. Oh, you prefer to go door to door? I'll say I'm writing a book on folklore. I don't know what else to do, Kate. I'm sorry. You're right. It's better than nothing. I told her we would have one today. I know. When they got back to Footbridge, Kate got it home. And Derek went to the diner to start making some phone calls. Someone was waiting for him. Mom! Well, what are you doing here? When you didn't show up for mass. Oh, yeah. It's Sunday. Uh, sorry, I've been really busy. So I hear. What do you mean? I got a call from Mrs. Hargis. She lives in Well Heights. Oh. She said a young couple visited a neighbor of hers and were asking about finding a sin eater. You know anything about that? I didn't even know what that was at first. I had to look it up. Kate and I were just messing around. It's that aunt of hers, isn't it? The one who died? She's unnatural and godless. I've heard stories about her and her sorcery. There was no sorcery here. Then what do you call the sin-eating business? Those people are heathens. They were excommunicated, even executed for it. Mom, that was hundreds of years ago. If it was wrong then, it's wrong now. They just think they're saving people from damnation. It, it's just an old folk custom. It's that girl, isn't it? She's the one corrupting you? No one's corrupting me, and they're not hurting anybody. Well, it's a judgment from God, and those that are doing it are guilty. Guilty? Really, Mom? Guilty of what? Trying to help others? By maybe sacrificing themselves? By taking on other people's sins? Isn't that what Jesus did? No! How dare you? How dare you blasphemy? I'm sorry, but I taught you better than that, didn't I? Didn't I? Yeah, Mom, you taught me better. It is that girl, isn't it? She's the one corrupting you? No one's corrupting me. If she were not this way before you met her... Now you leave her out of this. I do what I think I have to do. Well, listen, if she is the bad influence here... Now, Mom, if you, I'm through talking about this. So, unless you're planning on throwing another tantrum. All right. You're an adult. I know that. And I can't tell you what to do or believe. Well, I'm glad you realized that. And I won't bring it up again. Good. If you make me one promise. Oh, God. <laughs> what? To stop looking for these sin eaters. Mom! Promise. No. Swear that you'll give it up. It's the least you can do. Do you know what it was like for me as a single parent raising you? Please, Mom. No, you don't. I tried my best to bring you up as an upstanding, righteous, God-fearing young man. All I'm asking is that you give up this heretical pursuit of yours. Is that too much to ask? If it is, just tell me. <laughs> Don't you understand? If you continue down this path, your soul will be damned. You'll be condemned to hell. You'll be dead to me. I couldn't stand to see that happen. So please, give up this sinful pursuit of yours. All right. You will? Yes. Promise? Yes. You swear? I... Swear. Thank you. Thank you. You'll see. It's the righteous thing to do. It's the godly thing to do. No 
Mona, I understand. I didn't feel like I had a choice. I had to swear to her, Kate. I know. She's your mother. What else are you going to do? Just like I have an obligation to my aunt. But I've been thinking. Maybe I know a way out. A way out? What kind of way out? I promised I wouldn't try to find a sin eater. Yeah, I know. I never promised I wouldn't be one myself. You can't do that, Derek. Why not? I don't know why not. You just can't. Well, as near as I can tell, anyone can qualify. You just need to act like sin eating's real. And if it is, hope you don't absorb so many sins that you become deathly ill. Well, there is that. But we have to try, don't we? I don't want you to do this. I'm not asking you to do this. I know, I'm volunteering. Kate, we don't even know if sin eating's real. It probably isn't. But at least we'll have done what your aunt wanted. Why you? It should be me. What if it can't be someone from inside the family? What if it has to be an outsider? That's me. But if it's true and you get sick? Well, we'll have to take that chance, won't we? Won't we? But I could never forgive myself if something happened to you. And if you don't obey your aunt's last wish and she gets stuck here, you could never forgive yourself, right? Looks to me like Aunt Moffat wins this one. I, I guess. Good. Then it's settled. When would you do it? Well, from what your aunt said, it has to be today, right? I think so. Then the sooner the better. Did you bring the bread? It's at the diner. I'll go get it. And come back, right? Yeah. Because when you do it, I have to be there. I have to, Derek. I won't do it without you. I promise. Hello? Derek, where are you? But you were supposed to bring it here. The diner? Why there? What? You can't tell me? Well, why not? Okay, okay. I'll be right there. What? The croutons. I made croutons out of the bread. Are you crazy? I figured if a whole bunch of diners eat just a little bit, no one should get deathly ill. Maybe not even queasy. At least, that's what I'm hoping. But how will you know it doesn't affect them? I think I'll be able to tell. How? I ate the first batch myself. Special recipe. 
few hours later, the piece of bread had been totally consumed, and Derek closed the diner. Do you feel any different? Not really. So maybe it worked. We'll know soon enough. What do you mean? If Auntie comes back tonight. I'm certain of it. There's more on the back. To both you and your fellow. Your fellow? Well, that would be me, wouldn't it? <laughs> Nobody else. Man, what a wild day. I think we saved her. <laughs> well, you may have. Both of us. We saved her. Well, if you're right. It's the least we could do. She brought us together. She did, didn't she? Yeah. And you know what? What? I'm ready to start that long, happy journey with you she talked about. <laughs> Me too, Derek. Me too. Stories like this one, that begin with once upon a time, usually end with and they live happily ever after. And that's what happened for Kate and Derek. They both graduated from university with honor. Kate in nursing and Derek in business administration. They got married, of course, and had twins. Jason Moffat Mays and Christine Moffat Mays. Over the years, they went on frequent birding trips, even one to South America. Oh my god! What? Did you spot a good one? It's amazing! Unbelievable! Don't tell me. A lavender-lipped pea wren? How did you know? <laughs> they watched hundreds of foreign movies, adopted two months, Bob and Ray from the local animal shelter, took yoga classes, and volunteered at the local food pantry. Most of all, they laughed <laughs> <lot> about <laughs> everything. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Once a year, they visited Aunt Moffat's grave. They knew she wouldn't want them to weep or moat or even sniffle. For Aunt Martha, life had been a celebration, and that's the way they treated it. They placed a single flower on her grave and drank a toast to her. Aunt We actually did believe in our happily ever after. And that's exactly what it was, at least for a while. Reality catches up with us all, 
and so it did for us. It was hard when she died. Even though we had a long, happy journey together, you're never ready. But I was stoic. I figured I'd have plenty of time to mourn later. I don't know why I decided to do it. I still don't know what to think about this whole sin eater thing. But don't you know, I can't take a chance. If eating a piece of bread and drinking a glass of ale will bring her peace, I have to do it. <laughs> but uh, no croutons this time. <laughs> this is my Kate, after all. Her sins, all her sins, are mine and mine alone. And what if sin-eating is real? What if I get sick and die from overdosing on them? After all, I am much older now and not as strong as I once was. That'll be okay. I'm ready to call it quits. And who knows? Maybe Kate and I will be reunited on some other plane. Stranger things have happened. And that would be wonderful because we still have so much laughing left to do. <laughs>